بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو سول اباؤٹ دا فائر ہائیڈرینٹ ٹیسٹنگ اوکے دس ٹاپک از ویری ویری امپورٹینٹ وائل یو آر ورکنگ ایز اے ڈیزائن انجینئر اور ایز اے مینٹیننس انجینئر اوکے ان فائر فائٹنگ فیلڈ سو یو مسٹ نو اباؤٹ ہائیڈرینٹ اٹ مینس اے سم ٹرمس کال پیلر ہائیڈرینٹ دین ہاؤ ٹو پرفارم دیئر پریشر اینڈ فلو ٹیسٹ اوکے سو وی نو دیٹ فار پرفارمنگ دا فائر ہائیڈرینٹ ٹیسٹ فائر ہائیڈرینٹ ٹیسٹ ہے فائر ہائیڈرینٹ ٹیسٹ ایز پر این ایف پی اے ٹو نائنٹی ون اوکے ریمبر دس ون دیٹ وین وی پرفارم فائر ہائیڈرینٹ ٹیسٹ دین مسٹ وی ہیو ٹو کمپلائی این ایف پی اے ٹو Okay, so let's see that what NFPA 291 says. Okay, see. This is the fire hydrant flow test report as per NFPA 291. Okay, here we have to fill location, date and uh, who made the test, everything. But the important is here consumption rate during test okay and how much gpm it means we will show here indicate pump operating here we have to also mention that while we are testing then what is the pump pressure okay indicate pump operating but also here we have to fire flow hydrant okay how much hydrant we are testing their name okay if uh, we are testing hydrant 1 2 3 4 many hydrant then we have to mention here the name of all hydrant okay and size of nozzles see must we see fire hydrant has a uh, three nozzles outlet right one is 4 inch and other two is 2.5 inch okay we will see okay and this pitot reading while we are performing the test then what is the reading of pitot tube okay also discharge coefficient so all this one we have to put one by one but how we must have to knowledge about the nfpa 291 okay let's see that uh, what NFP 291 say about the testing, right? See, here, here, this is NFP 291 says test layout for hydrant, okay? See, if it is two hydrant, okay? We test hydrant, uh, taking the two hydrant, okay, at a time. we can take more hydrant but at least it should be two then uh, the reading will come correct right suppose here it is two hydrant here it is two hydrant okay then the, this hydrant r it means the residual hydrant okay one hydrant is residual and other flow hydrant is like a we can mention f1 f2 f3 okay but the residual hydrant will be indicated by r and it's called residual hydrant why because we note down the residual pressure and as well as static pressure at this fire hydrant okay suppose we have three fire hydrant then one will be residual always one will be residual and remaining will be flow hydrant okay 
one will be residual, other will be flow head. Here, one will be residual, other will be flow head. End. Okay, but uh, now it's not clear that what means residual hydrant and uh, flow hydrant. Okay, so let's see. I will show you what uh, it means. See. We show you the practical. Okay. See, this is the pitot tube which we discussed before. Okay, here, here, here mentioned that size nozzle pitot reading, right? Then this is the pitot reading. Okay. The pitot have two parts. One part is this one. Okay, which will connect in flow hydrant. Okay, which I show you. Then see, just I show you here, here that flow hydrant, flow hydrant, flow hydrant. Then this part. this part will connect in flow hydrant okay this part and other part this part will connect in residual parts okay residual part this part will connect this part will connect in residual parts right residual parts residual hydrant okay this part now clear and this part will connect in flow hydrant flow hydrant okay not at a time the hydrant which we are going to test okay it will connect this part will connect in flow hydrant okay so now it's clear that pitot tube okay pitot gauge you can say have two parts okay one will connect in res uh, residual parts and other residual hydrant and other one will connect in flow hydrant okay so now let's see here we have to mention size nozzle okay so size nozzle which we are performing okay so size nozzle will be 2.5 inch because fire hydrant have i mentioned before that two nozzles okay i show you Here, see. This is two nozzle, two point five inch, right? Two point five inch. Okay, two point five inch. This one, and this nozzle is four inch, right? Four inch. See, this one is four inch, and other one is. 2.5 is 2.5, right? So here we will mention 2.5 inch. Pitot reading. What is the pitot reading? See, this is the pitot. Okay, have two parts, but pitot reading. This is one. Okay, while following the hydrant. I show you. I show you that pitot have two parts. One part, this one. Other part, this one. We connect in two hydrant. Suppose here we take two hydrant. Hydrant number one, hydrant number one, and hydrant number 
2 okay so one part we will connect in 4 inch which I show you not this part this part this part we will connect in 4 inch okay this is the 4 inch so we will connect this one in 4 inch this part this part we will connect in other height end in 2.5 inch okay so when we will connect when we will connect this one in 4 inch in height end number 1 and after connecting this one we will open this height end okay remember we will open this height end and when we will open then water will not come out but the gauge will show the pressure that pressure we will note down okay that pressure will note down and that pressure is called a static pressure okay that pressure is called a static pressure and we indicate a static pressure by ps okay suppose we connect the this part in 4 inch and open the hydrant and that time we note down the pressure ps it means a static pressure suppose we note down 75 psi right here we note down 75 psi remember other part of the fire head uh, this uh, pitot tube we connect in hydrant number 2 same time okay this in 2.5 inch okay and open the hydrant fully this hydrant number 2 this hydrant number 2 we connect this part and open all okay and that time that time when water is flowing fully okay that time the pressure gauge this pressure gauge reading will be called p2 pressure okay we denote p p2 pressure okay suppose this reading is 25 okay but minimum is 20 psi it must be as per the nfpa 291 it must be 20 psi not less than 20 psi suppose we note down 25 psi right and the same time when water is following in hydrant number 2 then this reading is called p2 reading p2 pressure okay and same times the hydrant number 1 here we will note down the pressure that pressure is called residual pressure okay residual pressure remember residual pressure suppose we note down 50 psi suppose okay now it's clear that we, we will take two hydrant at a time hydrant number one hydrant number two and we will connect this pitot tube one part in four inch and in hydrant number two other hydrant we will connect this part okay in 2.5 inch and without opening this one this hydrant we will open fully and that time when water is not flowing here that time this head is closed okay that time the pressure we will note down is called a static pressure okay and when we will connect this one and open full okay in hydrant number 2 that time we will note down the pressure this pressure is called p2 pressure okay and the same time in hydrant number 1 we will note down the pressure that pressure is called residual pressure okay so how many pressure in residual hydrant we note down two pressure okay one is static and other one is residual pressure remember okay in residual pressure we always note down two types of pressure one is static one residual okay and pitot this flow 
flow hydrant as per NFPA 291 we call flow hydrant because water is flowing from here that is why we call flow hydrant here in uh, residual hydrant there is no flow of water right so we call this one residual pressure in flow hydrant we note down only pitot pressure okay so now it's clear now let's see what the calculations say okay so see air calculation as per nfp 291 here say the formula used to compute the discharge okay that how much water is discharging okay how much water is discharging while the pitot pressure is 25 psi okay we have to calculate so which formula we will use this formula we will use okay Q is the GPM, yani discharge flow, okay, discharge in GPM and 29.84 C D square, C it means coefficient here and D is the diameter, we say that fire hydrant have two diameter, one is 4 inch and the other one is 2.5 inch, so pitot we insert in 2.5 inch so dia will be 2.5 inch right and this pressure is called pitot pressure which we note down okay this pitot pressure which we note down okay while water was following in pitot tube right but the here we have the value of d 2.5 okay here d value is the 2.5 inch right and p2 pressure it means p we have how much 25 psi while performing but we don't have c value okay coefficient value c The coefficient will as per 2 and 291 have this one okay have this one okay this is the 2.5 inch dia of the fire hydrant okay this is the half part of the fire hydrant okay I show you because we are hydrant okay this one will be round and after that here it will come here is the 2.5 inch okay then here hydrant will connect in the bar. this is the full hydrant okay this is the full hydrant so half portion of the hydrant here it is so see I show you in the real here see this is the part I show you this is the half part and this is the half part which so this is 2.5 inch and this one 2.5 inch we as per the NFPA it so like this okay so here it's not clear but when we, you will see in the real picture you can imagine see the water which is coming from pipe from the underground here it's passing right here it's passing or here it's passing right so if this area is a smooth outlet is smooth and round then the coefficient we will take 0 0.9 and similarly as well okay if this one is sharp 
or a square then coefficient will be 0 0.8 and outlet like this okay like this so coefficient will be 0 0.7 but how this hydrant is already installed so how we know inside that this is the smooth or, the, or not right how we will know this inside is the smooth here here it is a smooth or not here is a smooth right this part is the this part right so we have to download the catalog this fire hydrant same name and we have to check in the catalog then that the outlet is the sharp or a square or projecting into barrel okay if you don't want to download my class you can take the average of this three okay three value like 0 0.8 you can take no issue okay nothing more will change but if you want to make the exit then you have to download the catalog and you have to check that outlet outlet is a smooth or round or scale Now it's clear. So I am taking 0 0.8 here. Here, C we take 0 0.8 right b is 2.5 inch other one p it means p to tube pressure is 25 psi right so we will calculate how much gpm is coming see to 29.84 formula okay c here c is 0 0.8 multiply d square right d square is 2.5 inch oh, class i show you 29 Point eight four multiply C is zero point eight. Okay. Multiply here is two and D is two point five inch square. Okay. 2.5 inch and multiply and multiply under root no it's a here it's a confusion okay so i show you here q is equal to bq is equal to 29.84 okay and multiply c is 0 0.8 we take multiply d we can take 2.5 inch okay square and under root Here root of P twenty five PSI, right? So we can write twenty nine point eight four multiply zero point eight twenty three point. 23.87 right then multiply 
2.5 multiply 2.5 okay the root of 25 so we have multiply 2.5 and 2.5 two times 149.2 149.2 okay and multiply root 25 right so the root 25 is 5 right check here 25 root is 5 right so 149.2 multiply 5 total is coming q is coming 746 GPM okay here the flow is coming 746 GPM right here from this hydrant the flow of water is coming 746 GPM while the pitot pressure is how much 25 psi right so in report here in report we will write size nozzle 2.5 inch right and pitot reading how much 25 psi okay and discharge coefficient how much we took 0 0.8 okay while we take 0 0.8 then total gpm was how much 746 gpm right but here it's testing gpm is coming 746 while discharge is 0 0.8 but the total gpm okay like a predicted gpm we have to calculate now here okay and also a static pressure i show you that residual pressure uh, at the the pressure which is a residual hydrant okay that time we calculate 75 okay and the residual was 50 percent right but the here total gpm we have to calculate now this is the actual this is the actual gpm but the predicted gpm we have to fill here right So, for that one, there is another formula. This is the formula. Okay. This is the formula. Okay. See, this Q we calculated here. This, okay. How much? Here Q F. We calculate how much 746 gpm right and we have to calculate this qr qr is predicted flow okay hr hr is the pressure drop hf is the pressure drop measure during test okay this is the test but this hr we can write ps minus pd okay PS is the static pressure. Okay, static pressure from where we measure? From the residual hydrant. Okay, and PD, this PD, it means the discharge pressure, yeah, drop pressure is 25 psi as per NFP 291. Okay, the minimum pressure of fire hydrant should be 20 psi. 20 psi, okay not 
less than this one so pd is the 20 psi okay so here we can write then qr it means predicted flow is the qf qf is the 746 v major and hr we can write hr is the ps 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 minus pd right 0 0.54 right and here hf we can write ps same ps yeah, it means static pressure and p r it means residual pressure okay we can write right here same so 746 multiply ps with the static pressure 75 minus pd is the minimum pressure drop okay and 0 0.54 and ps same by ps 75 minus the residual pressure it means pr is the 50 psi it means 0 0.54 right see see okay if anything doubt then uh, just comment below and i will explain okay so here 746 multiply and here 5 i think it will come 55 it will come 55 right let's check 25 minus 20 20 yeah? 55 right another one is 75 minus 50 then 25 right so here it will come 25 okay multiply 0 0.54 okay so now let's say 0 0.746 multiply 0 0.746 here 55 let's check here 55 divided 25 right how much it will come 2.2 so here it will come 2.2 and 0 0.54 right So 746 multiply 2.2 okay 0 0.54 it means here it's coming 1141 it means 42 right so QR it means predicted GPM is the 
coming 1142 GPM okay yeah. right so this is the predicted GPM and other one is the air when we will use this formula then it will come here the actual GPM and this is the predicted GPM so we will fill out this one Yes, size nozzle be 2.5 inch pitot reading was 25 psi discharge coefficient we take 0.8 and the gpm actual gpm was 746 gpm and the, this gpm was 1142 okay and static pressure is 75 psi and the residual pressure is 50 psi right after that we will fill this one location and everything and we will submit to the client right so now it's clear that how to test the fire hydrant okay and the formula we know okay and this is the two parts which we connect in two hydrant okay so the testing part of the fire hydrant is finished now see while designing of the fire hydrant then it's very important to a spacing of the hydrant okay so a spacing of hydrant we select as per nfpa 1 as per nfpa 1 okay so see nfpa 1 what say here here it's saying the maximum distance to a fire hydrant from the closest point on the building okay it means here is a building okay and here is the hydrant okay hydrant so it's saying that from the building and the hydrant distance should not exceed 600 feet okay in dwelling this one is uh, uh, saying in terms of dwelling building okay where people are living everyone everywhere people is living but in the dwelling area okay for one family or two family and the distance between two hydrant suppose here hydrant hydrant one and here hydrant two so the distance from one hydrant to other hydrant from one hydrant to other hydrant should not exceed 800 feet okay 800 feet okay remember this this term is in dwelling for one family or two family but in terms of commercial see in terms of commercial here building other than detached one family and two family then then the maximum distance yeah, the maximum distance to a fire hydrant from the closure point is 4 feet 400 feet okay from here it is 400 feet okay while designing for the commercial building and the factory or everything then we will take from the building to the hydrant distance will be 400 feet okay and the one hydrant and between two hydrant the distance should be not cross this 500 feet okay it means here here the one hydrant should not cross in the 500 feet okay the distance between two hydrants should be less than 500 feet okay now it's clear so it's very important while placing the hydrant okay while designing and the other one when we place okay 
the hydrant then see when we place the hydrant if here I show you if this is the building and this is the hydrant right the distance here here this distance if less than and equal to 200 feet okay then the maximum capacity of the hydrant we can select 1000 this 1500 gpm okay hydrant capacity maximum okay similarly if distance is less than 200 feet uh, greater than 200 feet and uh, less than e and equal to 500 feet this one distance then we can select 1000 gpm okay and similarly here 750 gpm okay this is the maximum per hydrant for uh, flow capacity we can select it, it doesn't mean then 500 here 1500 gpm we have to select no this is the maximum capacity we can select 1000 gpm 750 gpm but this is the should not cross the 1500 gpm while the distance from the building is less than or equal to 200 feet okay and uh, similarly color here color is class double a light blue if hydrant is light blue then class a a class a b c green orange red if fire hydrant color is red then it comes under class a or class c class c sorry okay here class c orange cap of the hydrant is class b okay and uh, also here which I show you see class A, A it means 1500 GPM class A it means 1000 GPM class B it means 500 to 1000 GPM class C it means 5 less than 500 GPM okay so we can also uh, assume or we can know that to while seeing the fire hydrant color okay if color is I show you light blue then that hydrant capacity will be 1500 GPM okay rated okay also here the clear space around the hydrant okay 36 inch clear space shall be maintained around the circumference of the fire hydrant okay if fire hydrant, hydrant is here then the distance from all should be here clearance okay should be the space should be 36 inch clear spacing okay all, all side there a clear space of not less than 60 inch shall be provided in front of each hydrant connection having a diameter 2 point uh, greater than 2 and half inch okay so remember this all points i hope this point is clear and now you will never forget while performing the test or while placing the hydrant in the uh, designing ok so if you have any doubt then comment below and if you learn something from this video then of course like subscribe and comment thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh